Hello YouTube and welcome to Atheist Minority. This video will be a continuation of my Bible lesson series. Episode 2 covers the Lord's Supper. In the Gospels, Matthew, Mark, and Luke all depict Jesus as instituting the Lord's Supper on the first day of Passover. However, in the book of John, the Lord's Supper is never instituted because Jesus was already dead by Passover. Instead, he performs a foot washing ceremony and shares a final meal with his disciples the night before. Of course, some apologists attempt to explain this discrepancy with long-winded descriptions about how Pharisees and Sadducees celebrated feast days differently, or that you have to look at the solar calendar versus the lunar calendar, and even some really confusing explanations about how the Passover lamb was slain at twilight, but Jewish days go from sunset to sunset. Whew. Despite that, many biblical scholars don't jump through these hoops. They admit the discrepancy and say that the author of John purposely changed the dates around to better depict Jesus as the Lamb of God. If, as stated in John, Jesus was executed on the day of preparation, he is now analogous to the sacrificial lamb, which is slaughtered for the Passover meal on that same day. Convenient, huh? Now ask yourself, if even Bible scholars admit to this instance of one of the Gospels manipulating facts in order to better suit the Christian doctrine, don't you have to wonder how many other things have been altered in God's Word to fit some human agenda? And more so, if this book is the roadmap for your life, are you okay with not knowing the answer to that question? Jesus institutes the Lord's Supper in the first three Gospels, and Paul references it in 1 Corinthians chapter 11, verse 23. I want to share with you the passage from Matthew. Again, I'll be using my English Standard Version of the Bible to read the passage, but you can follow along with your own version or just listen. So now turn with me to Matthew chapter 26 and we'll begin reading at verse 26. Now as they were eating, Jesus took bread and after blessing it, broke it and gave it to the disciples and said, Take, eat, this is my body. And he took a cup. And when he had given thanks, he gave it to them, saying, Drink of it, all of you, for this is my blood of the covenant, which is poured out for many for the forgiveness of sins. Now, if you haven't ever done so, I recommend that you do a little bit of research on the pagan god Mithra. Known by a couple different variations on the name, Mithra dates back to the Indian Vedic religion around 1500 BCE. But here's the part that's really interesting. In the Roman Empire, this deity was known as Mithras and was worshipped during the 2nd and 3rd centuries AD. It wasn't until the acceptance of Christianity by the Emperor Constantine in early 4th century AD that Mithraism began to decline. The similarities between Mithras and Jesus are enough to make your head swim, but for this video, I only want to mention one. Mithras had a last supper of bread and wine with his 12 companions, centuries before Jesus. During the meal with his disciples, Jesus predicts that one of them will betray him. So the disciples begin to get all paranoid and they start asking, is it me? Is it me? And in the book of Matthew, Jesus confirms that it is indeed Judas. It comes to pass that Judas does give Jesus up with a kiss, and according to Matthew, he was riddled with guilt afterwards. On the same day Jesus was condemned, Judas went back to the chief priests and the elders to return the 30 pieces of silver he had received for his treachery, and then he went and hanged himself. The priests took the silver and, calling it blood money, used it to buy the potter's field as a burial place for strangers. And that is why, according to Matthew, this field is called the field of blood. The book of Acts tells a different story. In this account, Judas himself buys the field 
with the rewards of his wickedness. Swelling up, he burst open and all of his bowels gushed out. According to the book of Acts, that incident is why the field is so named. And then we have Paul, who tells us in 1 Corinthians chapter 15, verse 5, that after his resurrection, Jesus appeared to the twelve. That number therefore included Judas. Not to mention the fact that according to Mark and Luke, Jesus revealed himself to the eleven following his resurrection. Which disciple was missing from this wondrous occasion told in the two Gospels? Well, after the events that we've just heard about, you'd think it was Judas, right? Wrong. The missing disciple was none other than the infamous Doubting Thomas. If you're a Christian, the Lord's Supper holds tremendous meaning for you. Based on your denomination, you observe the Lord's Supper once a week, once a month, maybe once a quarter or once a year. In any case, communion symbolizes Jesus' death and resurrection and his promise for your salvation. In fact, if you're Roman Catholic, it's more than just symbolism. You are partaking in the actual blood and flesh of Jesus Christ as part of the Eucharist. Jesus himself established this ritual according to the Gospels, and it's a significant element of Christian worship. Shouldn't it be clear cut? Is it too much to ask that the accounts be perfectly aligned with one another, since this is, after all, the inspired word of God, his holy book? There's clear evidence that this story has been stolen from pagan mythology and tampered with by human hands. Just do a little bit of research from your own non-biased sources and you will quickly discover these things for yourself. In fact, most of the things that I talk about in this video come right from the Bible. And I know you already have one of those. You are able to begin to see the truth with honest exploration. My question to you now is, are you willing? Thanks for watching. Peace.